So we have our beautiful high poly here. It is finished, but how on earth do we transform this into a low poly? And there's actually a lot of ways of doing this. You know, we could take it into ZBrush, for instance, and use something like Decimation Master. And that will create an entirely new mesh that's really, really low poly, you know, depending on the setting that you use. In fact, Maya actually has its own uh, remeshing functions, but I would say they're a little bit worse than Decimation Master. Another thing we can do is just select all of our control edge loops and start deleting them by hand, which is gonna take a long time. But there's an even faster way of doing this, and it's inspired by a feature in Blender, which is called Limited Dissolve. And basically what it does is it deletes all of the edges that aren't contributing to the curvature of the mesh, like these, for instance. And I have its equivalent right here, kind of. It's just a little script with a few commands that I found on the internet. And the way it works, check this out. I very originally call this select flat edges. So what it does is you first select all of the edges that you want to work on, and then you click on this. And you'll notice that the only edges that remain selected are basically flat edges that aren't contributing to the silhouette of our mesh. So I can safely delete these with control delete and you'll notice how our mesh doesn't really change. This is effectively our low poly now. And with this little script, we are pretty much 90% of the way there. And if we have some edges that should have been deleted, but weren't, that just basically means that they were not as flat as we thought they were. Yeah, I don't know if you could see that, but these were not flat faces. But it doesn't matter, we can just delete them by hand. However, we deleted some edges which we shouldn't have. Basically the edges that were connecting this extrusion to the rest of the mesh. Because even though it looks fine, it actually isn't. We need to reconnect this to the rest of the mesh somehow. But this is not, this shouldn't work. We try to do this. See how it just disappears? Like Maya does not know how to reconnect this to the rest of the mesh. So what we need to do, because in fact, this is gonna prevent us from using our mirror tool as well. For some reason, Maya doesn't like this type of geometry. If I do this and then I delete history and I try to mirror backwards on the Z axis, notice how nothing is actually happening. So this type of geometry just confuses my for some reason. So what I'm going to do is just delete this and recreate these faces. Oh, there's a vertex here. So I'm just re going to reconnect this with a bridge. And that's all I have to do. The rest of the edges, I can just use fill hole. And now we should be able to mirror down and back and see our mirror is working again. We're getting that that cut. In fact, just to demonstrate again, I'm gonna do this, shift to Z. Yeah, it's working now. So we just have to keep an eye on certain edges being deleted. We're almost done with this piece. In fact, one thing I could do is just select all the angons and triangulate them. And that's basically all I need to do. However, I don't really like how the triangulation uh, algorithm works sometimes and I prefer guiding it a little bit just to make the mesh look a little bit nicer. For instance, I really like uh, what it did here, but I don't like what's going on right here. <laughs> so I'm just going to guide it a little bit. And the way I'm going to do that is, for instance, selecting these, deleting that vert, doing this. And that way, once I triangulate, this can only triangulate in a very specific way. Like that. That looks a lot nicer in my opinion. And in fact, we can just triangulate when we export. There's a setting right here when we export our selection and we're using FBX. You can just click this button, triangulate, and it's going to triangulate your mesh before you export, which you should do before you even go into baking. 
but the reason I like clearing up some of these engons beforehand is because there was one time where I was doing an art test and my low poly had these massive engons, which again, I was gonna triangulate before exporting. I mean, there were flat faces too, so like the easiest thing in the world, but I needed to send some screenshots of my wireframe before I was allowed to move on to the next phase. And I decided not to triangulate them first because I thought they made the wireframe look cleaner. So I just sent them like that. And you can guess what happened. The first thing that they said was like, hey, you should really triangulate those before you even try to do the baking, which I fully intended to do. But instead, it just made me look less experienced. So from that moment onward, I do like cleaning up or not cleaning up, but triangulating the mesh a little bit beforehand, just so that I don't look like a noob. That's basically it. But like I said, you can just triangulate when you export. It doesn't really matter how, how you do it. I just wanna make it look a little bit nicer. Something like that. And I only need to work on one side because I can just mirror the rest. And it's almost done. I like to say pretty constantly. And here's some more edges we deleted, which we didn't want to delete, but because they were flat edges, my little script selected them anyway, but we'll just rebuild them. Oh, by the way, one thing you can do is if you select two verts and then you use connect components, all you have to do is just keep pressing G and that's like incredibly comfortable to do. So what else am I missing? There's some edges right here we don't need. So let me just paint select all of them. And let's do this. Oop, wrong one. This one too these ones so yeah I just want to triangulate some of these engons beforehand even though we don't actually need to I feel like I'm missing something oh these ones these you know what I'm I'm not going to overcomplicate things. I'm just going to move this all the way up and everything should be fine. The curvature is going to change a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. What else am I missing? Oh, there's still more. Wait, didn't I just, didn't I just merge these? Low? Last one. That's good enough, actually. You know, I keep mirroring in all three axes, so I, or axes, whatever. I should just have one hockey that mirrors in all of them at once. And we're pretty much done. Oh, actually, before we move on, there's one thing I might want to change, and. It's the amount of segments in my bevel. You know, you might think this is way too much for a low poly, but it really depends on your budget. When I originally added this many segments, I figured I'm gonna do that so I can like zoom in really close to my low poly and you won't be able to see the segments. Cause you'll, if you played any video game, you'll notice how the, the amount of segments or their poly count is usually pretty low. The, the silhouette is usually very, obvious and very like faceted and I never really liked that especially for a portfolio piece where I don't really have a budget and I can just make it look as nice as possible but even then I might have gone overboard and added a little bit too many so if I wanted to get rid of some of these segments I can actually do that pretty easily because again I don't think I'm ever gonna zoom in this far into my my little crate 
Yeah, the closest I'm gonna be is like here probably. So I can afford to get rid of some of these segments. And the way I'm gonna do that is by just selecting a ring and then shift right click, where is this? Collapse edge. And it's gonna collapse every individual edge towards the center. Oh, actually let's count our poly count before we even do that. So right now we have 2,630. Okay, so let's collapse and let's do the same thing with this one. I can just press the G key and the same thing here. And then let's just mirror everything. And we went from 2,600 to 2,200. So we got rid of like 400 triangles just by doing that. So it's not bad. I mean, it really depends on your budget. In a budget of thousands, it might not be that significant, but it might actually be. And this is, I can I can live with that amount of segments now. That I think that looks better. Again, I'm not really gonna zoom in like this and, and see this faceting. So we're good. Some shading issues here because I think these aren't flat faces. So I'm just gonna press Alt S. Or if you're not using my hotkeys, shift right click. Uh, soft and hard edges, same thing. And I just noticed this. You know, after I collapsed these edges, we got this one, but this side is a little bit wider than this side. So we can like try to move this back into the center or instead we can just shift right click and use edit edge flow. And it's kind of, kind of gonna do it for us, but I don't know, it messes up uh, these other edges a little bit. So it depends on you. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use it and see what it looks like. Same thing with this one, I'm just gonna press G. And then it's this one, right? G. <laughs> now this edge is all messed up. G. I think everything is good now. Yeah, I can live with that. That looks nice. And we're pretty much done with this piece. I mean, now I can delete these edges, which are just a byproduct of the mirror. And this is it. This is how we're gonna make our low poly. So this piece is gonna take a little bit longer and can't wait to do it. So let's actually get started with that. Oh, quick reminder, you can get my shelf and my uh, my scripts for free. There's a link in the description, so check that out.